Hi, friends. I'm Emily Lay, and you're listening to The Simplified Podcast. If you're looking for a quiet place where you can filter out the noise and the hustle, this is it. Every week, I invite you to slow down and join me to explore practical ways to organize and automate the complicated parts of life so you can focus on what truly matters most. Well, friends, it's not too late to grab your simplified planner for this school year. Hop over to emilylay.com to shop our collection of minimal, meaningful agendas in monthly, weekly, or daily formats. If you're a business owner, you know how much time it takes to do the important stuff, like managing payroll and employee benefits. So save yourself some time and let Gusto help. With Gusto, you can manage payroll and HR for your growing business all in one place. Most businesses using Gusto can run payroll in 10 minutes or less. And Gusto can help with the hard stuff too, like filing payroll taxes, registering for new state taxes, and so much more. So join more than 200,000 businesses using Gusto to build a great workplace for their employees. My listeners can get three months free at gusto.com slash simplified. Get easy payroll benefits, HR, and a happier team. Go to gusto.com slash simplified for your first three months free. Gusto.com slash simplified. We just had a big day here in the layhouse. After lots of research and so much consideration, Brian and I decided it was time for Brady, our sixth grader, to have his very own phone. Whew, okay, this is a big step for everybody, mom and dad included. It's a little earlier than we expected one of our kids to have a phone, but after a lot of discussion, it just made sense. Brady has a lot of sports commitments this fall, and we wanted to be able to get a hold of him while he's at practice and vice versa. It might be earlier than we expected, but we think it's the right time for Brady. When I shared this news on Instagram a couple weeks ago, y'all flooded my DMs with your own experiences, questions, and advice around kids and phones. I knew we weren't the only parents going through this, but I was fascinated to hear how y'all are navigating this with your own kids, just like we are. Just like you guys, I want to be able to do this really well. I want to help my kid create healthy boundaries with technology. I want to think about what I can do to help him with that. I figured maybe it's time to have a podcast about it. Brian and I are still very, very new to all of this, so please know I am not an expert on this by any means. We're still feeling our way through this, but I wanted to bring on someone who is an expert here, who spends a lot of time thinking about how we help our kids grow in physically and emotionally healthy ways. So naturally, I had to bring Sissy Goff back on the show. We love Sissy Goff around here. She is the Director of Child and Adolescent Counseling at Daystar Counseling Ministries in Nashville and one of the brilliant podcasters behind the show called Raising Boys and Girls. We had Sissy on the podcast last year, all the way back in episode 30, where she talked about how to help your kids manage their anxiety in stressful times. It's still one of our most downloaded episodes ever. And today she kindly let me pick her brain about all things phones and screens and boundaries and emotional development. I could have talked with Sissy for hours about this, not only because I'm so full of questions around this topic, but because she's such a calm, thoughtful voice that helps me think through big parenting decisions like this one. No matter where you are in your journey, whether you've got a kid who's a few years away from having their own phone or has had one for years, or whether you're the cool aunt who's trying hard to be a great advocate for the kid you love, this is a discussion that'll serve you well, I think. So here we go. Here's my conversation about kids and phones with Sissy Goff. Well, hi, Sissy. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast again. Thank you for having me back on the podcast. I'm so excited to talk to you every time. Oh my gosh, me too. I have just been absolutely eating up everything that you've been posting. We're recording this in August. So everything you've been posting about back to school and getting our kids ready and talking to them about what's to come. And I just, you and David are just both amazing. So thank you for all the goodness you put out into the world. Thank you. Well, sure want to help. It's just, it's a hard world. We're helping kids navigate these days. So it is glad to be a voice that gets to help for sure. Well, one of the things that we have recently embarked on in the lay house, we have a sixth grader. So Brady is going into sixth grade, just started sixth grade. And middle school is a whole new world. Right off the bat, we have experienced lots of expectations of independence from school. So keeping up with all of our things and managing multiple classes and changing classes and all of that. So Brian and I, we did not plan on this. We we just knew we would know when he was ready for a phone. 
And we just one day, a couple of weeks ago, we're looking at each other and talking about all the after school activities he'll be at and, you know, new friends and going places. And we said, we really are going to need to get a hold of him sometimes. And I, he's super responsible. I think it's time to get him a phone, one that text messages and makes phone calls. And he, of course, was thrilled. And it has been a whole new thing. But I posted to social media about making this decision for our family. And I have no idea when my little two will get it. You know, they may or may not be in sixth grade. They might be in 12th grade when they get it. Um, (laughs) Everybody's different. But lots of questions came from our followers and our podcast listeners about like, how do you know when your child is ready? And so I'm just going to throw the million dollar question at you. How do you know when a kid is ready for a phone? Like, is there any data on when it's the most beneficial for kids to have access to that, whether it's phone or social media or what are your thoughts? There's a lot of data and a lot of conflicting data out there. And and I would say, I mean, yes, we want to read all those statistics. We want to be really aware of what kids, where kids are, where they're prone to struggling, I think, in technology world, the technology world. But I think my rule of thought with technology and kids is you really want a parenting community. You really want to be mm. aware of your kids, where kids are in their class. And yeah. I don't think with kids and letting them get their first email address, even definitely phone, definitely social media. You don't want to be the first yeah. in their whole grade because that child is often going to be perceived as cutting edge or fast, yeah. which is not how we want the kids we love to be perceived. Right. And I think you also don't want to be the last because I think our job as grownups who love kids is to teach them to be responsible with technology use while they live under our roofs. Mm. And so part of that is letting the rope out gradually and all the things. And so I usually tell parents to be the next to last. Okay, <laughs> I, mean, I love and, that. <laughs> yes, really to wait till you feel like, okay, forever your kids are going to say, everyone else in my class has a blank and that doesn't matter. It's not necessarily true. But when you feel like, okay, I think really everybody else pretty much does, then I think it's time to jump on board. Yeah. Because you've had more brain development opportunities. You have more teaching opportunities along the way. Yeah. And then there are a lot of things that device comes with in terms of a contract, in terms of a lot of conversation with your kids. But that's typically my rule of thumb. Yeah. And to have a group of parents that you're deciding together, this is when we feel like it's time. Yeah. And that way, when they say, I am the only one, you just have automatic backup. Well, no, I talked yeah. to this person's parent yesterday and that person's <laughs> the day before. If they haven't done it yet either. I think that can be really helpful because you want to take into account, you know, what, where are they culturally? Because there are some kids, it's not even going to be a conversation yeah. until later. And some kids are going to be pushing earlier, but, but you do also want to take into account how they're doing emotionally, because I think a really anxious child or a child who's struggling with some depression, like if we're thinking about social media, we want to hold off longer for those kids. Yeah, that makes, it makes so much sense. We, it's funny, we kind of did that. Like we had some friends that I was in communication with about like, what are you guys doing? You know, his good buddies and that kind of thing. And they were all like, well, I don't know, you know, so-and-so has a phone. And then we all started sharing contracts that we saw online and we ended up, a lot of us kind of said like, okay, we're starting middle school. We're all going to kind of go into this together. We shared our kids' phone numbers with each other so that we could get in touch with them if we needed and that kind of thing. But it is, it's, it's scary because you don't, you don't want to hold it. I, I don't know. I, I built my business on social media. And so there's part of me that wants to keep him off of it forever and ever and ever. But that's just not the case. So we went with the phone first and we'll we'll cross the social media bridge when we get there. We're not there yet. And I think that's so smart, Emily, because that's what you want to do. You want to give them a little bit and let them prove that they're responsible and they know they have something they're working towards. And then when he's done great with his phone for a period of time, then you think about, are we going to let him have his first social media account? And yeah, we start with something more benign like Instagram. Don't start yeah. with TikTok. I had a very different experience in the last year with TikTok really? and kids. I'm hearing him talk about. Yes. I just got a TikTok account for myself because I almost felt like I, I needed to, to keep up with the way social media is changing. And I, yes. I posted the same video to TikTok that I posted to Instagram. And the... I, I didn't get on to look at it for like two weeks. And then just the other day, I opened it to go look at it. 
It had 234,000 views and it had wow. hundreds of comments and they were savage. I mean, really? mean and just a whole, it's a whole other ball game over there. Well, the things kids are learning and researching <sighs> on TikTok yeah. is astounding to me today in terms of mental health. That's really? where they're getting the bulk of their information on mental health. Really? Is, on TikTok? Yes. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, I have a, a really close friend who's got children who are a step ahead of mine. If that makes sense, their ages are about, you know, three or four years ahead of mine. And so I, I tend to talk to her about like, you know, how do we navigate this? Cause you've already done it, you know? And she was the one that said to me, you won't, you know, you only get a certain amount of time with them under your roof. So as much as we want to completely shield them from everything and keep them in a bubble, which I would very much like to do. Of course. It's important to be there to walk through it with them while they're under your roof, because who knows what happens when they leave it. So I love that piece of advice. Uh, I love that one a lot. One of the things that Brian and I decided when we, we got the phone, so we, we purchased the phone, and then I spent probably 48 hours putting the phone on lockdown, like getting all of the family sharing. Apple has some really good family sharing controls and things like that, setting up all the passwords and doing all those things just to make sure I was doing everything possible to keep him safe with the phone. I felt like the contract had to be, you know, just right. So we made a contract that we got from Bark. It was a, it's a great, a great place to find things like that. But how can parents set boundaries around phones and communicate those boundaries to kids in a clear way at the beginning of a phone relationship. I mentioned Bark, but there, are there any other apps that you recommend or contracts or that sort of thing? Bark is my favorite. I'm glad you is brought it? them up. Yeah. We had the two heads of Bark on our podcast, which if you haven't had them, you need to have them. They're That's amazing. awesome. Okay. No yes, problem. I learned so much. And and it made me respect what they're doing even more because it is so much about keeping kids healthy in all the yeah. ways, but especially technology use. And so I love that they have a contract online. And mm -hmm. and I think installing something like that, that can have eyes on not only is is filtering, but also monitoring what your kids are doing. And And yeah. I love that so many monitoring systems now are not just watching for you know, inappropriate context, but they're also monitoring for bullying language. Yeah. They're monitoring for depression, self-harm, you know, words like that, which is so important. Yeah. And so, you know, I think the biggest ideas would also be just monitoring their time. And Bark mm. is really helpful. Something called Teen Safe, I think, is a great resource too. Oh, okay. Or Circle is, which is a hub that you can buy that's in I've your seen house. That. Yeah. Yes. And, and you can put each device on Circle or TeenSafe. Either one does the same thing in terms wow. of this. And that way you give each person in your household has a time limit that you don't have to. I think we've got to take out the conversation of, I need your phone now. You've met your time criteria for today. Right. Give it to me. And then we're in this power struggle with them. But right. there's something that just locks it down after a period of time. And then we just get it. to say, oh, yeah. Remember, that's what we agreed to on the front end. Yeah. Sorry. That's really helpful. You know, and you, you just keep rolling. That's what we've done with our kids. We did a screen-free month this summer. Good. Yeah, it was actually really amazing. I thought it was going to be really hard. And it, it ended up being really enlightening, not just to me, but to the kids as well, that we didn't do TV. We didn't do iPads. We went on road trips and... They had, we listened to podcasts and stuff like that. We did some like, uh, some like family movie nights, but other than that, they did it. And it was, it was amazing. But coming back into screens now, we utilize the screen time with, there's a setting within an iPhone or an iPad that you can monitor screen time and then you have to have a password to add more time and that kind of thing. But I found yeah. that, I found that to be super, super helpful. Well, what do we do if we've already given our kid a phone, but we're not exactly fans of how they're using it or we're having some struggles and that kind of thing? How do we help them improve their digital hygiene, so to speak? That's a good word. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like anytime we talk about technology, parents always feel like, oh, no, I already messed that up. And yeah. the reality is we're all learning this technology world together. And so at any point, I think as a parent, and even if your child helped pay for part of their first iPhone or their first iPad or whatever gadget, I think you can always go back and say, as long as it's under my roof, I get to set the rules. Yep. And 
I didn't realize. And so we're going to back it up. And even I love that y'all did a screen three month as a family that we're modeling what we model as grownups is so important with kids and screen. And so that we're walking it back together to say, you know, I didn't realize that TikTok was not an app you really needed to be on at 10. And so I apologize. I want to ask for your forgiveness because I wasn't taking good care of you Mm -hmm. as a parent. And that's my job in all the things is to keep you safe. And that includes on screens. And so we're going to take a pause on this and we'll come back to it later. But for now, it's not the right thing for you. And and I I know I'm going to be the bad guy. And that's that's another thing as a parent with technology. It is we're seeing more and more parents who just want to be liked by their kids, who want to be their mm-hmm. kids' buddies. Yeah. And you're going to be the bad guy with technology. If you're being a good parent, you're going to have to be the bad guy and you're going to have to have hard conversations. And so at any point to take it on yourself and say, I'm sorry, it, this was my fault. But we're going to have to change some things. It's totally an appropriate answer. And there will be a million times you'll have to walk it back. Yeah, we have. (laughs) Proven years with technology as a parent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And things, I feel like things are changing so quickly. And then just our kids' interests, like what they want to do with these devices is changing so quickly. One of my little bitty ones, we had to walk it back with YouTube. We had YouTube kids on the iPad, which I thought, you know, it had a lot of safeguards and I felt like it was good. And there was still some things that I just didn't love the relationship we were having with it, if that makes any sense. And so yeah. I had to do that very thing and and be the bad guy. And by, I mean, by the next hour, they'd forgotten about it. But right. <laughs> but, but it's helpful to be able to, to know that it's okay to say like, mm-hmm. you know what, things are changing so quickly and we're going to have to, we've been going this direction and we're going to have to go a different direction. Yes. And that's a great point. I mean, I think one thing I would add, Emily, is to Whatever your kids are wanting to download and interact with, to download it first as a parent. I mean, we had, there was one game a couple of years ago that I think we had five kids in counseling at the same time over one game. Oh my God. And none of us knew about the backstory of this game. And it was like a horror story, but parents didn't know. And kids were hearing about it on the school bus and downloading it on their devices. And so again, we were playing catch up, but I think it's why we want to, if they want to play a game, turn on that ask to buy setting. Yep. And make sure they come to you and that you, as much of a bummer as it is for you on an afternoon to have to play some silly cartoon game, you need to play the game first. <laughs> yeah. Or you need to download the app first and interact with it and see if it has a social media component because yeah. the age limits that are set on app stores are not people like us that set those, you know? They're not. And and we've yeah. even found that like ads and things can be yes. kind of scary or just a lot. Yes. So yes. just to see like what pops up in a certain app. Oh my goodness. It's just so, why is it so stressful? It's so I stressful. Know. <laughs> I know. One of my favorite stories recently, I had a mom who gave her daughter Instagram for the first time. And she said, before I let her have it, I got in and I watched about 300 videos with puppies because I thought <laughs> I'll go ahead and get her out of the you. That's awesome. That is so brilliant. So Brady, Brady ha- does not have Instagram on his phone, but I created an account for him. It's on my phone. I have had it there for like maybe two months now. And I go in and follow like New York Times kids. I thought that was a good one. So I'm following, but I want to see like what we're posting, what we're sharing. And then like ESPN, he's really into sports, but like, what are they sharing? So I get in and I look at the things just to say like, it, who knows? It could be 10 years before I, well, that won't be 10, but it could be a couple years before we give it to him. But at least I'll know kind of what I'm handing over because it's just yeah. so much. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, well, you are doing this with so much wisdom. Way to go. Oh, thank you. I, I don't know. I feel like I'm stumbling my way through. But, you know, I also, Brian and I also told Brady when we gave him the phone, we reserve the right to make changes to the way that we are going to handle this at any time because th- we've never had a kid with a phone. And we didn't have phones as kids, you know? I mean, my, my kids were like, well, how old were you when you got a phone? And I was like, I was in college. <laughs> what do you mean? Right, exactly. <laughs> right. So I think it's important to kind of set that standard from the beginning and that expectation as well. 
endless homework, pop quizzes, and tests. It's back to school season, parents, and OutSchool can help set learning free for your kids. OutSchool offers interactive online classes for kids ages 3 to 18. From solving magical math mysteries to creating unicorn art or even experimenting with edible chemistry, kids can find answers that will fuel their imaginations and help them excel in school and life. My kids are still talking about the Building a Healthier You class that they took on OutSchool. They learned the difference between whole and processed foods and even how to build a rainbow of foods on your plate. Needless to say, we're on the hunt for our next OutSchool class, which might be beginner coding. So set learning free for your kids. Head over to outschool.com slash simplified and use code simplified to learn more and save $15 on your child's first class. That's O-U-T-S-C-H-O-O-L dot com slash simplified to save $15 on your child's first class with code simplified. Outschool.com slash simplified code simplified. Guys, I've struggled with sensitive skin my whole life. Whenever I try a new foundation or sunscreen, I'm just waiting for the moment my skin breaks out in an itchy red rash that takes way too long to heal. So if you're like me and struggle with skin that's prone to breakouts, whether it's because of eczema or acne or even rosacea, you need to give Glad Skin a try. Here is a nerdy science tip. When your skin's microbiome isn't balanced, your skin gets itchy, red, and inflamed. Glad Skin targets the imbalance in your skin's microbiome using a revolutionary protein called microbalance, which restores the balance of the good and bad bacteria that live on your skin so it can finally heal. Glad Skin with microbalance is steroid-free, and it's even gentle enough for babies. It's clinically proven to reduce eczema symptoms. In fact, 91% of users who tried Glad Skin's eczema cream saw a significant improvement after just seven days. So try it for yourself. Glad Skin is offering my listeners 15% off, plus free shipping on your first order at Glad gladskin.com slash simplified. That's gladskin.com slash simplified for 15% off plus free shipping. Gladskin.com slash simplified. So from the get go, I want my kids to have a healthy relationship like we've talked about with technology. I want them to realize that online relationships, they can be fun and you can learn so much from your online community and connecting with others, but that it's really important to cultivate community right where you are. We tell our kids like, be where your feet are. You know, it's important to to connect with community in person as well. So how do we make sure that our kids aren't just like disappearing into their phones? We as adults know how easy it is to get lost for an hour scrolling Instagram. How do we help them understand that creating community with people in their actual lives offline is equally, is more, not equally, is more important? Yes. Well, the first thing I would say to that is kids are experiential learners. And so as much as we say that to them, there is not going to be a child, maybe until I start to hear girls say this around 17. There's not going to be a child who says, oh, you know what? I haven't been interacting enough with my real life community. I'm going to get myself off social media and go engage with someone in person. Wow. They can hear you say that, but they're not going to necessarily implement it into their laps until like junior, senior year of high school. That's when I see them make those choices. And so I would say earlier on, that's where we've got to have the limits in place and we've got to make sure they're experiencing more of real life. Like David recommends to parents for every hour they play on a video game, they need to have an hour outside playing a real game, you know, a real that game. we think yeah. about, yes, boys and girls, different, different ways they're interacting. The other thing I think is we need to make sure they're in places, you know, we just finished the summer. We have a little summer retreat program through Daystar Roman Counselor for the kids in counseling called Hope Town. And to have kids with us for a week without screens. Yeah. Number one, I was amazed at how much they don't know what to do with themselves anymore. Right. But number two, it's just so important for them. So to do things like a screen-free month or they go to camp for a month where they can't have any access to it and they have to engage in real life rather than virtual life. I think we have to set the parameters rather than teaching these lessons that are true and important and believing they're going to say, oh, let me put that boundary around myself. Mm -hmm. They're just not going to. So we've got to help them make their way there. It's like a muscle. Like it, my muscles yes. aren't going to get worked out if I don't go to the gym and work them out. And so it's like with our kids, we have to put them in those scenarios where they have to learn how to develop that. I mean, my kids at the start of our screen free month, we wrote out a list of all the things that we could do without screens. Like 
all the things. And so whenever they were like, I'm bored, I'm bored, I would say, go look at the list. There's 75 ideas up there. And they discovered toys that they had for so long and just sat in the closet. You know, they they went searching for things. And I felt like that was a good you know, that was a good experience. And then of course we gave them their screens back when that was over and we had to, we had to back it up real quick. Like, hold on, we're not going right back to the way things were. We're going to put some different boundaries in place, which goes back to what you said about just staying in communication and ebbing and flowing. Well, like any part of parenting, I think there comes a moment when we have to start letting our hands off the reins a bit. I am 100% not ready to let any reins, hands off any reins yet, but (laughs) eventually we will get there. In my brain, that's going to look like when I let my kids have social media, because to me, that's the wild, wild west. It's just terrifying. Yeah. What does that look like when it comes to technology? And how do we begin to trust our kids with more responsibility around technology? Well, I think it's that idea of give them a little bit, let the rope out. Your kids are going to mess up when it comes to technology. Yeah. And we want to give them opportunities to do that when we can talk it through with them, help them pick up the pieces. I I wrote a little, like a mini book about technology called Taming the Technology Monster. And I speak some on technology and kids and I hate it every time because the whole room looks just stricken when I'm talking about (laughs) technology. But I, I spoke at this Sunday school at a church and and there was a dad in the room that I could tell I was making him matter and matter the longer I talked. <laughs> and the more I said, I want you to let the reins the rope out gradually so that they're learning how to handle technology yeah. while they're under the roof. And he stood up at the end of this hour long talk. And I try to really soft pedal and be super gracious and smile yeah. a lot when I'm talking right. about he, he stood up, like didn't just let the microphone come to him. He stood up and he said, I need to say yelling already that technology is not a child's God-given right. And if your child is on the internet, go home and shut it down. I mean, he was screaming, Emily. Wow. And, and he said, the first time we let my son get on the internet on his phone and send a photo from his phone was when we were driving him to his high school graduation. <gasps> and I remember thinking wow. that poor kid had yeah. zero freedom in May And then in August, he's sitting in his dorm room or somewhere on his own Mm -hmm. and can do anything. Anything. He never learned what it looks like to swim in the shallow end of the pool. You know, he just got thrown in the deep end. And and that just isn't helpful for them. And I I will often have parents when I speak on this say, but can't we just not do it? Can't we just avoid the whole thing? We're going to do that as a family. And I think... We are causing our kids to struggle more because it's out once there. they hit the point that they have it. And so yeah. to think about again, how do you start small, give them more privileges as they earn it, kind of like training wheels. Yep. And then eventually we work our way to social media and we say, you know, you're gonna get to be on, on it 20 minutes a day in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then when they do okay with 20 minutes, we bump it a little bit more and then we bump it a little bit more. And then we take breaks and we talk all along the way, like. Tell me how it's been feeling to be on Instagram lately. And Mm -hmm. I want you to feel like you can come to me the first time you get your feelings hurt because you're going to get your feelings hurt. You're going to see a birthday party that everybody went to and you weren't invited to, or you're going to get on Snapchat and there's going to be this little bubble and you can tell all your friends are together and you're not there. And so (sighs) let's talk about not only what it's going to feel like, but what you're going to do when it happens, because shooting off some DM is not going to be helpful to you and your friendships. So Just having a lot of conversations along the way, I think is really important. I love that. David's book, Raising Emotionally Strong Boys, I've been listening to in the car and learned so much about the impulsivity around being a teenager and being a child in general and like how that can play out with technology. And I think I love what you both say about just staying in communication because they they are going to get their feelings hurt and they and they are going to have those those mistakes they make or whatnot. This is so helpful. And I just thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom and ideas and thoughts. It's so encouraging to me as a mom. And I know that we have so many other moms or people who love kids in their lives here listening. So thank you so much. Will you just tell everyone, Sissy, about where they can find you and find your books and all your resources? Emily, you're so great. I'm so grateful for your voice in the world and the difference you make and the beauty you bring and that it's not just beauty, but a lot of truth too. So very grateful for you, Brand. And 
Yes. So RaisingBoysAndGirls.com is our website and they can find our podcast there and a lot of the books. And then I try to help as much as possible on Instagram at Sissy Goff. And we also have Raising Boys and Girls Instagram too. So all the places we're just trying to put out information to help parents navigate things today with kids. That's awesome. And you guys have to go follow Raising Boys and Girls and also Sissy Goff because they do. Your videos lately especially have just been so encouraging and helpful. So thank you for, for everything. Thanks, Emily. You're the best. Wow, you guys. That conversation was so helpful. And honestly, every time I talk with Sissy Goff or David Thomas, who works with her, I just leave the conversation feeling so empowered, so equipped to make big decisions, to support my kids in all the things that they are embarking on. It's hard raising kids who are growing up, and especially with technology that's constantly changing. But I feel really good about our decision and about the way that we are navigating all of this after our chat today. Also, I want to just acknowledge here that there are many ways up the mountain and every kid and every family is totally different and that is okay. We all have to make choices that are right for our specific individual unique families and children. As we close out this episode, I want to say a blessing for you as we leave this time together and get back to our days. As you navigate a new season of parenting, may you trust yourself and your kid to try your absolute best in this new phase. When your kid messes up, and they absolutely will, may you each learn from that moment and give plenty of grace to each other as well. And over time, as you loosen your grip little by little, I hope you watch your child grow in confidence and soar to big, new heights. As always, I like to leave a little tip to help you put what we've talked about today into practice. So here's your task for this week. Before I gave Brady his phone, I spent some time installing a few apps to create some boundaries around it. First, I installed Bark Technologies on his phone, which we've used on the kids' iPads for a while. It's a parental control software that lets parents do things like monitor content, manage screen time, filter websites, and so much more. We also installed Live360, which has some super advanced location sharing features so we can see if Brady made it to school or practice okay. If you've found apps that help give you peace of mind and help your kid handle their tech responsibly, I would love to know what you use. Leave me a comment in this Instagram post for this episode so we can all learn from your wisdom. Thanks for listening to the Simplified Podcast. I hope today's episode gave you a bit of confidence and a lot more calm as you and your kid figure out how to use technology well. You can find show notes for this episode at emilylay.com slash podcast where you can check out links and resources I mentioned here, and you can shop the Simplified brand of planners and products. And don't forget to pick up your copy of my kid's book called You're Always Enough right now wherever you buy books. I hope you're loving this show and I love making it for you. So remember the simplest way you can enjoy it is to subscribe to the show so it'll pop up right into your phone without you having to think about it at all. And while you're subscribing, it's easy to rate the show and leave a review while you're there. That helps this show get to other people who might enjoy it too. Thanks for doing that. And until next time, thanks for listening. Bye.